From the home of the 12s, they raised the banner just a moment ago. We are set for football at Lumen Field here a mile south of downtown Seattle. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Seattle Seahawks. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They run with the second year man, it's Kenneth Walker. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run, he gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. A shotgun snap for Smith. Left side complete to lock it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 10 yards and a Seattle first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll fake the handoff. Now Smith. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. And they had a gain of 10 last time, now a gain of 20 here. Good work here by the tight end. It's a crossing route off of play action. They're going to let the slot receiver run a post to hopefully let the defense think they're taking a shot. And then they bring the tight end underneath, and it winds up a first down. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. He hits his target, lock it. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A good pick up there at 22. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Credit the tackle for loss to Harold Landry. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Here's Smith. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Chance are good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive, and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Now Smith. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. They'll run on first down with Dallas. A nice pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone, and it'll be second and goal. As long as you've been the air attack that's gotten him down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. Walker. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. They'll try and run, Walker. And he's across the chalk, into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Kenneth 
Walker taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks are on the board first here this afternoon. Extra point up and through by Myers. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Here's Myers now to kick it away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The NFL's second leading rusher in 2022. Here's Derrick Henry. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Tannehill now to throw. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers, and ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Call it a pickup of three and also now likely a punt on their opening drive. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch it, turn up field, and pick up the first down. On fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on to punt. And back deep is DJ Dallas. And this will be taken at the 13. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. They've got the 7 0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they'd really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Geno out of throw. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and run. It's Dallas. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Walker now on first and 10. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Smith now on second down. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. It's picked up by the Titans. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the ball now going back over to the Seattle Seahawks offense. 
Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And that is incomplete. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously no loss of confidence with that defense, and now they get to turn it back to their offense. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine yard line. Nice punt. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. They set up the screen for Henry. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoored them, and that time worked well for a solid gain. Right back to Henry, and Henry's got it again. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Tannehill on first down. And a catch made by Hopkins. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that will bring up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Now second and five. To the air again, Tannehill. It's complete, Burks. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Tannehill. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Second and 10. Now it's Tannehill. He'll fire deep, looking for more. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and 10. Here's Tannehill. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 40. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Brandon, what's even more impressive is that came against double coverage. He gashed them with that reception, even with the extra focus that he drew from the defense. Tannehill's throw pulled in by Hopkins. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. 
They'll call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. Folks, kick is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is, heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing it to break. You obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board. Give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half is the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. And the Seahawks offense gonna get one final possession in this first half. And only six seconds on the clock, so time likely for just one play. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Out come the Titans now. They'll have it first on offense to start the third. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, They've been playing pretty well, and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run it again with Henry. And he goes out right around the 39. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe up to the 41. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Here's Tannehill. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive in the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. 
And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Smith. Targeting the out route, and he completes this to Metcalf. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that's going to bring up second down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. On second down, it's Walker, and he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards there and a first down. Great pickup by Walker. He's the second back off the board in the 2022 draft, but he was first among rookies in carries, yards, and touchdowns, and was the rookie of the year runner-up. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to Walker on first down. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Excellent job on the tackle for loss by Harold Landry shooting into the backfield. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. So a five yard run the other way in the wrong direction and that leads us to second and 15. Walker with another carry. Good footwork at the 30. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and 10. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Throwing on third down, Smith. And that will be incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Tennessee offense set to go again. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. You're exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, They've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. Now second and seven from the 23. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. He's going to be out of bounds on what's going to wind up being the final play of quarter number three. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs, that big guy, always oh, a nice luxury to have, isn't he? So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll try the right side with Henry. They'll get it across the 35. It'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second and seven. They'll try the air now with Tannehill. 
Yeah, this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. All oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was right for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game but it winds up incomplete. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. It's complete to Hopkins. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. So the completion good for six yards, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin them back. Here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production. But how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Now it's Smith. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Oh, I thought he had that one, and that was nearly a big third down conversion to give this drive some life. Instead, they're on the spot and help separate the receiver from the ball. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. This is brought in at the 21. A solid 12-yard return after the 55-yard punt. And it'll be Titan football. So now Tannehill and the Titans down 7-3. to three. Just over a minute, 40 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now Tannehill. He's got Henry. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Not in a position where they absolutely have to rush right now, but they definitely have to pick up the tempo a bit. They come up now on second and two. Tannehill. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Here's Tannehill. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Touchdown, Titans! Traylon Burks, 59 yards. And the Titans use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. 
and touchdown and congratulations and zero relaxation ahead of them, right? Way too much time on the clock for them to start celebrating. Yeah, part one is done, but now on the sideline, you can already see them scrambling down there. They're getting those defensive guys ready. Yes, you have to get those guys ready, and you also have to talk to your special teams guys. Make sure the kickoff is exactly what you want and cover it well. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Now the focus shifts to the Seahawks offense, trailing by a field goal a little over a minute to go. And they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and ten. Here's Smith. He's going to let it fly. And oh, that one nearly intercepted. That would have sealed it. Instead, it'll be second down. I don't know if you need the big shot right there or not because you've still got time to work some of the shorter stuff and try to get into field goal range. They did go for the big one there. It would have been nice, but it winds up incomplete. Smith gets this to Fan, and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line and here we are in the fourth quarter partner and you watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown and you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there not just for himself but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and ten now. Smith's going to throw it. Catch is made by Metcalf. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow. What an outstanding drive right there to take the lead, and also, Charles, didn't leave their opposition with a whole lot of time on the clock. Yeah, I like the way that you're viewing this because they did a tremendous job to put themselves in a position to win, but they can't celebrate just yet. They've got to clamp down on any big plays and force them to use up those timeouts without making any headway. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Julius Chestnut now on the return. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. 
And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Meanwhile, Tannehill's that's taken in by Okonkwo. Now the Titans will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. Now this offense cannot stop the clock now. No timeouts remaining as they come up here first down. Okakwo holds it in left side. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. They'll come up now on second down. Tannehill to throw. This for all the marbles. And that is going to be incomplete. Boy, they got the tip they were looking for, but couldn't secure it. And this one's over. What a game we were treated to in this one. And then on that final play, they had a chance. They had the ball just beyond midfield for one final shot, but couldn't get it done, and they suffered the loss. Yeah, and you mentioned how they had a chance on that final play, and getting it to midfield gave them that opportunity, hoping they could find their way to the end zone and make that miracle happen. A really good ending to an entertaining contest, though. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.